Okay, so hello everyone. So our topic for today is all about working with the Java class library. So at the end of this chapter, you will be able to explain an object-oriented programming and some of its concepts and differentiate also between classes and objects, differentiate between instance variables or methods, and class or static variables, and also to be able to explain what methods are and how to call and pass by parameters to methods, and identify the scope of a variable, cast primitive data types, and compare objects and determine the class of an object. So let's define first what is an object-oriented programming or OOP. So an object-oriented programming, uh, it revolves around the concept of objects as the basic elements of your programs. So these objects are characterized by their properties and behavior. When we say properties, these are typically the physical world. Uh, what is what we see in a physical world can be modeled in a software objects by their properties and behaviors. So we have here an example of an object which is car and a lion, wherein a car has properties which is type of transmission, manufacturer, color. So those are just examples of properties of a car, although we could add more on that properties. And the some behavior of a car, we have turning, braking, accelerating, those are behaviors or the, the movement of a certain object. And another example is we have the lion, wherein their properties is weight, color, hungry or not hungry, tame or wild. Okay, another properties. And we have also another behavior of the lion. We have roaring, sleeping, hunting. So kulang pangayan. We have also the, let's say, uh, eating, running. So those are also behavior which we can add to a certain uh, object. So since it is what we see in a physical world can be applied. If you are a game, uh, a gamer, if you are a gamer, you love to play games, computer games, the RPG games, so kung gusto yan, mga role-playing game na yan, uh, these are all, 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 these are all made up of concepts in physical world so wherein the characters are where the characters being applied wherein their properties are also can be seen in a physical world or physical movement for each character so what they do is just they just improve it they add features they add powers to make it uh, more interesting in a game development so we have here encapsulation wherein the method of hiding certain elements of the implementation of a certain class. So by placing a boundary around the properties and methods of our objects, so we can prevent our programs from having side effects, wherein programs have their variables changed in unexpected ways. So which means that encapsulation, we have to set limit for each variable or for each method. So say for example, let's go back to this example object. Uh, if we have car and a lion, uh, encapsulations means we have to set boundaries. The boundaries of car and lion are different when it comes to properties. They have the the properties of a car cannot cannot be interchanged with the properties of lion. Let's say yung weight niya and the transmission cannot be interchanged, or it might have this what we call problem. And even the behavior cannot be interchanged of this kind of properties. But if the certain object has a relation with another object, probably they can be interchanged but with a limit. Kasi if ever nagkaroon siya ng side effect, magkakaroon siya ng side effect sa program, yung, yung lion nyo nga, alamabaw, yung lion nyo, nagkakaroon na siya ng, nagkaroon na siya yung lion nyo ng manufacturer. Yung lion nagka, nagka, nagkaroon na ng type of transmission. But the, the properties, they have the same, which is color. Meron silang parehas na color. So, yan ang ibig sabihin niyan, this color, this type of uh, properties can be merged or can, pwede natin siya gamitin. Okay, meron siya lang similarities. And we have also turning, braking, accelerating, roaring, sleeping, hunting. So, hindi naman siya pwede mag, mag, mag interchange. Okay, so meron naman silang limit. Unlike with human being, so it's a human, we have ang properties natin can be have this similarity to 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 the 
animal or to the lion. Kasi meron tayong weight, meron tayong color, meron tayong height, we have also the gender, etc. We can also be a hungry and we can also be tame or a wild. Okay, meron tayong mga wild people or wild animals. Then, but when it comes to behavior, dito tayo makakaiba. But there are also similarities again. So, but human and an animal sleep. Parehas nila tayo nag sleep They we walk, we run, but when it comes to some behavior like roaring, hindi na yun pwede. So, it might be an effect on the program. That is what we call the side effect of the program. Kasi, by placing a boundary around the properties and objects, uh, properties and metals of our objects, so that we can prevent programs from having side effects. So, wherein programs have their variables changed in unexpected ways. So, class can be thought of as a template or a prototype or a blueprint of an object. It is the fundamental structure of the object-oriented programming. Why? Because when we create classes, we declare everything about the class. Nag-create tayo ng class ng isang car, we input the, the method or the properties and attributes of that car, everything in that class. So we will input that for that uh, car class. Now, we have here two types of class members. We have field, fields and methods. So under fields, we have the properties or attributes. Yeah, alam naman natin yung mga properties. So which specifies data types defined by the class. So if we could already identify the properties, we, 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 ang, ang sa class kay say, pag nag-declare ka ng class sa Java, it means that you are declaring it in a, parang nag-declare ka ng variable, but you put it in a method, yung field niya. I-declare mo siya uli, i-declare mo siya sa taas, just like declaring a variables, pero gagamitin mo siya as method. Then, we have also the methods to specify the operations. What are the functions of specify of, of the specific variable? Ganon, yung ginagawa niya. And, object also is composed of a set of data or properties, which are variables describing the essential characteristics of the object and consist of a set of methods or behavior that describes how an object behaves. So, an object is an instance of a class. When we say instance, from its original object, we create a variable object from the original object. So just like what we did in buffer reader class, the original object there is the buffer reader and the instance will be the, the, the variable, let's say data in is equal to new input stream reader. The data in there is the instance of the class. So ang ginagawa is just like if we have an original object, nagkakaroon siya lang siya ng duplication. Parang duplication lang siya. So we do not use the original object. The object creates its new class or let's say a new object based on the original. So kaya hindi naman na hindi naman nagagamit masyado yung original object. Kasi pag hiningi mo, bibigyan ka lang ng copy. So you have to use that copy. Yun na yung gagamitin for that object. So, to differentiate between class and objects, we have here an example. Uh, we have here a car class and an object, a, object car A and object car B. So, ang ibig sabihin nito, si car class will be the main object and si car A will be the instance of the class. Si car B din is the instance of the car class. Kung titingnan natin, we have these instance variables. We have plate number, color, manufacturer, can, and speed. Object car A and object car B have the same uh, value na, or interpretation or specific value for each uh, object. Kasi let's say si, si plate number, we have ABC111, XYZ123 for uh, car B. Eh, parehas naman lang sila. But kasi hindi naman pare-parehas yung sasakyan eh. Di ba? So hindi naman pare-parehas yung sasakyan but they have different colors. Like different colors, different manufacturers. But when it comes to instance method, doon sila magkakaparehas. They both accelerate, they both turn, they both, okay? Kung baga sa behavior, pare-pareha sila. So, hindi naman pwede magkaiba, okay? So, yung alibawa, yung, yung iba is walang break. So, hindi naman yung pwede. That will be the difference. The difference. So, the classes provide the benefit of reusability. Definitely, yes. So, software programmers can use a class over and over again to create many objects. So, like Buffered Reader, it is, it is an example of class. We are just reusing it. 
So, ang ginagawa lang is it generates an, uh, uh, sabi ko nga kasi, it instance. Nag-generate lang siya or instantiate lang siya ng new object. So, you can already use uh, the object. Now, next is we have the class variables. So, classes consist of instance variables, instance methods, wherein class variables or static member variables, wherein these variables that belong to the whole class. So, it means that the same value of all the objects in the same class. And we have also here a class variable, which is count2. Count is equal to 2, which means this is an example of a static variable wherein we can immediately get or di ba, ang, ang, ang opening natin ng main program natin is public static void main. So the main method there can, can be immediately called. Pwede mo siya tawagin. Pwede mo siya tawagin in, in, in different class as long as they are connected to each other because of the static. So we have here the class instantiation, which creates an object to the instance of the class. By the use of the new operator, we instantiate the, the new object. So we have a string, str1, the new string. So this reference here to the object, the str2 will be the reference to the string object, and the string object now will be the hello world. So kasi si string meron siyang mga constructor, so pwede siya mag-accept. We will, uh, you will understand more on the constructor later on. Ano ba yung tinatawag kong constructor? So the new operator allocates a memory for that object and returns a reference of that memory location. So when you create an object, you actually invoke the class constructor. So ito na yung tinatawag kong constructor. So this is a method where you place all the initializations in and it has the same name as the class. Pag nakakita kayo ng isang constructor, then nakita nyo na parehas yung sa loob ng class, yung file name ay yung constructor name niya is parehas ng class name, it means that it is already the constructor of that object. Okay? Mer pwede kayo mag-create ng maraming constructor as long as they have different in parameters. Pwede yan maulit-ulit with the same name. Kasi si Java or sa object-oriented the Java, when it comes to class constru uh, creating constructor, and using the constructor, it automatically, the, the Java selects the best constructor to be used for the instantiation of that object. So, anong ibig sabihin ko nun? Halimbawa, ito. Pag inalis ko tong hello world, si Java na maghahanap kung mayroon siyang kaparehas na constructor na walang parameter. Pag linagyan ko naman ng hello world, si Java na mismo or si OOP na mismo maghahanap if there are uh, constructor that mayroon siyang parameter na string. Okay, method is a separate piece of code that can be called by the main program or any other method to perform some specific functions. Ang method kasi is just like functions in, in C language. But in Java, we call it as method. And meron siyang mga characteristics wherein it can return no one or no values. So if we use void, probably this fits for these characteristics. It may accept as many parameters it needs and no parameter at all, or parameters are also called arguments. Pwedeng wala, pwedeng meron, as long as it is valid for the function of that method. So after the method has finished execution, it goes back to the method that called it. Now we use the return value. Uh, I mean the return method or pag nakavoid, no return method. Why do we use methods? The heart of effective problem solving is in decomposition. That is really the, the reason why we use methods. Because if we do not use methods, probably the coding might be get, uh, siguro, uh, hindi natin siya ma, what do you call that? Something like, hindi natin siya ma organize masyado yung code natin if we do not use methods. Especially if there are computations, manipatical operations, Let's say, meron kayong square root, meron kayong uh, addition na part. So we can already create functions for additions. Although that there are already built-in functions for addition and square root. What if di ko kayo pinagawa ng, pinagamit ng mga built-in functions? Parang gano'n. So we can also do this in Java by creating methods to solve a specific part of the problem and taking a problem and breaking it into small, manageable pieces which is critical to writing large programs.
So ito nga eh, pag malaki na kasi ang mga programs, you need to use methods. So hindi na kailangan yung hard coding. So in calling an instance variables, we need to use the name of the object, the name of the method and parameters. So halimbawa, yung ginagamit here parse int, ito yung ginagamit dito is the, the integer. Ano yung main name of method? Parse int. Then the parameters can be the string. That is the example of an instance method. So calling an instance method like the car at and equals ignore case. So I already discussed this in string methods. So we'll skip on this part. Then we have also examples of, of these instance variables. Let's say str1 hello. X is equal to str1 that car at zero, which means it will return the character H for the zero index. And for str2 hello, which means result str str1 that equals ignore case str2 which is it will return the value false i true which is equals the value for the str1 str2 although they have different in in capitalization or the lower case or upper case of the character kasi equals ignore case naman siya okay next is we have the parameter passing so the pass by value so when a pass by value occurs when method makes a copy of the value of the variable passed to the method, the method cannot accidentally modify the original argument even if it modifies the parameters during the calculations. So all primitive data types when passed to a method are passed by value. So we have here an example of the pass by value. We have public class test pass by value. And we have variable here int i is equal to 10 and we have also the output here i so syempre the value here will be 10 also then we now call the method test i based from the public static void main test with a parameter int j which j is equal to 30 this is the parameter as passed by value so when i execute this code what would be the output okay so try natin siya Encode natin siya. If we have int i, to be sure kung ano talaga ang sagot. But the answer is really 10. I-display ko pa rin. Pakita ko pa rin sa inyo. Para at least alam niyo yung value. Yung pass by value. We have, we call the test uh, method uh, i. Then, na lang to. And plus the method here after the main method the public static void test in j j is equal to 33 From Java C. Okay, then we have Java test. We have the value is 10. And yung value niya. So, although kasi pinadaan niya dito, the parameter ng J, and then the value of J was replaced, but since pass by value siya, hindi naman siya nag-return eh. Pinadaan niya lang yung value. So, the value is, the answer is 10. The next is the pass by reference. So, when a pass by reference occurs, the reference to an object is passed to the calling method. So, this means that the method makes a copy of the reference of the variable passed to the method. So, however, unlike in pass by value, the method can modify the actual object that the reference is pointing to. Since although different references are used in the methods, the location of the data may, may be in pointing to is the same. So in parameter passing naman for the pass by reference, this mostly occurs in an array because 
in an array, it creates already the reference value sa memory allocation niya na. So, nagkakaroon na siya ng allocation. Kaya, mas ginagamit ang pass by reference sa mga sa array declaration. So, in this example, if we have an array ages is equal to 10, 11, and 12. So, if we display the value, we have also the value is 10, 11, 12. Then, we, we call the test ages. Then, the display is for int i is equal to ages that length. Then, increment, then display also the, the value of ages. Oh, okay. Now, based on the test, what would be now the output? So, since it is a pass by reference, so palitan ko lang, meron akong in-link code yung kanina. I'll just copy the code. Yan. We have same file name. Latin. Uh, error. Yeah, yeah, dito. Meron pa. Collected yung PH. Clear natin. So the answer is uh, 50, 51, 52. Why? Bakit yung sagot? Okay, so the answer is 50, 51, 52. Because if ages here, this is an array ages, passes to these parameter ages. So pasok na siya dito sa array din. Okay, pagdating dito, it will perform a for loop since it is a pass by reference. Ibig sabihin, the, the value was already in reference. So, pinasa dito, array i, index i is the value, first is 0. So, ibig sabihin, i here will be 0 also. So, 0 plus 50 is equal to 50. So, hindi na gagamitin yung value na 10, 11, 12 because in this type of method, ang ginamit dito will be the index. Yung ginamit niya index, kaya hindi siya magiging 60 or 61, 62 or even 10, 11, and 12. Kasi naka-reference siya eh. Ang, ang sa array kasi, pag once nyo nag-declare kayo ng array, gari lang yan, parang pointer yan eh. Parang pointer yan, which points out the, the allocation to the memory. Kaya pwede mo siyang ma-access if, pwede siyang maging pass by reference kasi pwede mo siyang ma-access even in the in the set for loop. Pag as long as naka-array siya. Pero kung gawin natin yung siyang ordinary variable, wala, hindi pa siya na-allocate sa kwan eh. Sa memory niyan. Unless gagawin natin siyang yung parang gaya sa C, like pointer. So pwede yun. It can be replaced, the value. Okay, so pinapakita dito sa diagram na to. So let's say ito yung ages, by value 10, 11, 12. And meron tayong test method. So, the reference of the array of integers, which is array, is pointing to the value of ages. So, nagkaroon na ganyan, siya ng reference doon. Now, calling the static methods, uh, static methods that can be invoked without instantiating a class, means without invoking the new keyword. So, static methods belong to the class as a whole and not to a certain instance or object of a class. So, static methods are distinguished from instance method in a class definition by the keyword static. So, pag may nakita tayong static, ibig sabihin, it can be called anytime. Paano, yun makiki Paano natin siya i-call? Class name, then the static method name, then the parameters. Halimbawa, integer, ito yung class name will be integer, then the method name will be parse int, then the parameters. So, that is a... Yung integer that parse int kasi, example yun ng static method. Okay, yung static method doon will be the parse int. Pero yung class name niya, ang tawag doon is the, the main object. 
pag nagamit kasi kayo ng, ng static declaration, uh, kahit hindi na siya i-declare as or i-instantiate pa man, pwede mo na siya tawagin. You can call it immediately as long as it is an static variable. So yung mga examples of static methods that we already used. So yung system.out.println is an static. Uh, we have also the integer that parse in the integer the integer that the integer that to hex string. Now we have also what we call the scope of a variable. Uh, in our previous discussion in Java fundamentals, we discussed about the scope, uh, the 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 block. Okay. So they, this is what uh, this is something like similarity with the block and the scope. Kaya lang, this scope is cover the dito it, it explains about the the variable the access of the variable so wherein determines the lifetime of a variable how long the variable can exist in the memory so scope is determined by where the variable declaration is placed in the program or simply things just think of the scope anything between the curly braces meron tayong mga uh, inner blocks and outer blocks of, of scope of using scope so a variable scope is inside the blocks where it is declared starting from the point where it is declared and in the inner blocks so in this example let's say for example int i the coverage of the variable i is from its the opening of the curly brace up to the closing pag nag nag, nag declare man ng j j int j was declared so the coverage of int j will be starting here up to the end of the block yan yung coverage int j cannot be called before the int i dahil mo siya pwede itawagin before int i yung j and k naman is declared so since it is inside the block so the coverage of k will be starting from dito lang siya int from m and n yan ang mga giging coverage ni k so m and n and so on masyadong maliit yung coverage nila so, paliit ang paliit as long as na nakaloob naka sila sa isang block. So, based on example number one, ito na yung sagot niya, which is scope of variable A, I is A, the scope of variable J is B, the scope of variable K is C, the scope of variable M is D, and the scope of variable N is E. So, let's go back. Ito yung A, B, C, D, and E. So, in example number two kanina, if you are, if you notice that the the int i declaration is used for all for loops. So, lahat ng for loops, naka int i yan. But, na, hindi siya nagkaroon ng error. Because of the scope coverage of the int i declaration. Si int i kasi para lang dito yan sa block na yan. Ito naman, nag-declare ulit ako ng i, dito lang sa block na yan. And ito naman is for this block. Okay. So, let's proceed to the scope of a variable. Continuation. Then, when declaring variables, only one variable with a given identifier or name can be declared. So, in a scope, so that means that if you have the following declaration, int test is equal to 10, int test is equal to 20, which means this will be an error. Why? Because of the duplication of the variable name. So, however, you can have two variables of the same name if you are not declared in the same block. Pwede yun. So, what, just what we do, uh, just what we did in, in example number two about the pass by reference. So, avoid having variables of the same name declared inside one method to avoid confusion. Okay. Next is we have the type casting. What is this type casting? Type casting is converting data type of one data to another data type. We have we will be discussing the casting data with primitive data types and casting of objects. Okay, let's begin it with casting primitive types. In casting between primitive types enables you to convert the value of one data from one type to another primitive type, which is it this commonly occurs between numeric type. So this is one primitive type data type that we cannot do casting. Though that the uh, and that is the boolean data type. Ang pinaka common lang na pwede natin gamitin for casting is the double, int, and character. So yan yung mga common natin pwede i-convert. 
So meron tayong types of casting. We have implicit casting and explicit casting. What is this implicit casting? So for, so suppose we have to store an integer data to a variable, data type double. Let's say meron tayong num int equal to 10. This is an integer and the double, num double, which is double, is equal to num int. We can uh, we can implicitly cast it. Kung 10 to, ilalagay mo siya sa double, pwede. Kasi the destination of the variable holds a larger value than what we will place inside it. So that is implicitly casted to data type double. Okay, so yan, another example. Num int 1 is equal to 1, num int 2 is equal to 2. So we divide the value for num int 1, num int 2, and the receiving variable will be a double. Kasi pa nag-divide tayo, definitely meron siyang magiging uh, decimal point. Kasi hindi naman sila perfect uh, number na pwede pag divide mo without any, without any remainder. So when we convert naman data type as a large type or to a smaller type, we must use an explicit casting. So in explicit cast, take the following. We have the data type and the value. Where data type is the name of the data type you are converting to. And value is the expression. is an expression that the result in the value of the source type. So say for example, type cast an int to a character value or vice versa. A character can be used as an int because each character has a corresponding numeric code that represents its position in the character set. Say, for example, the character A is equal to 65. So, yan ang value ni A when it comes to ASCII character. So, kung gusto natin mak makita what is the value in, 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 in ASCII, so we can use the casting, uh, the explicit casting. So, yung value natin, yung value ni A to 65. So, yan. Explicit casting yan. Pwede. Also, an explicit casting, let's say we have 10.12 double, val double, val int. That is also explicit, implicit because we convert the value double using the integer data type. Okay? This is also an explicit casting, yung x divided by y. So, in casting objects, Instance of class also can be cast into instances of other classes with one restriction. So the source and the destination classes must be related by inheritance, wherein one class must be a subclass of the other. So ibig sabihin, if meron tayong mga object, and if the, that object is not related to, a, to that object, meaning hindi natin siya pwede i-casting. Parang example niyan is, if we, have in a, if we are in a family tree, diba? So family tree, we have our parents, uh, grandparents, parents, and uh, the siblings or hanggang sa atin. So in, in what we say, when we cast it, uh, nagkakaroon baga ng, nagkakaroon ng um, let's say, misunderstanding if times na in the, in the family tree, let's say yung pinaka especially sa mga especially in 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 ng mag, magandang example halimbawa sa mga movies or movies with uh, talking about family so yung parang nagkakaroon ng mga mana let's say merong merong pinamanahan na hindi naman pala siya fan kabaga part of the family so, nagkakaroon sila ng conflict. So, that is also one way of casting, which is hindi pwede. Now, casting object is analogous to converting a primitive value to a larger type. So, some objects might not need to be cast explicitly. So, ganun, hindi pwede. How to cast? We have the class name and the object. So, where class name is the name of the destination of the class, and object is the reference of the source object. So dito naman sa pagcast ng objects, ito, example nito is we have the employee, uh, we have also the uh, vice president, and tigcast niya, naging employee, naging vice president. Ang the simple explanation of this casting of object is like, 
uh, if we if we focus on this example, think of that in a company, lahat lang naman is employee. Okay? Lahat naman lang yan employee. If you are part of a company, you are already part of the organizational structure. So if you are part of the organizational structure, it means you are eligible to be casting. So eligible ka for casting. So pwede ka maging ma-promote. So pag pro-promote ka, parang casting na din yan eh. Kasi you are an ordinary employee, then naging kang vice president. Kinas ka, naging kang vice president. That is one way of casting on an object. Uh, pero rin, may apply natin sa estudyante, sa inyong block. You are all student. Okay? You, are, you are all student. And meron kayong presidente. Okay? That president is already casted to become a president. But although he, he is or she is an student. Parang ganun. Now, converting primitive types to objects and vice versa. So one thing you can do under the circumstance is cast from an object to a primitive data type or vice versa. So uh, as an alternative, we can use the java.lang package, which includes uh, classes that corresponds to each primitive data type, like float, boolean, byte, and so on. So we call it as wrapper class. Ano naman tong wrapper class? So this wrapper class of this, uh, these are the names of the data types, except that the class names begin with the capital, capital letter, short instead of short, double instead of double, and etc. Ang example ng wrapper class is ito. Uh, di ba nag-declare tayo ng integer new count? So we declare integer new count. Pero pwede rin tayo mag-declare ng integer data count like this one. Like this example. Kinakas natin siya into an object. Pero pwede na yan. Acceptable din naman yan. Okay? Another is string Pennsylvania. We have 65,000. Then we convert it into integer that parsing. So that is an example. Now, comparing objects. So we already know how to compare objects with the use of the equal, not equal, less than, or so on. Then the rules of the operation of equality. The not equal. So when we apply of these ob objects, so determine whether the both sides of the operator refer to the same object. So we are comparing. So itong mga example na to, bibigyan ko lang lang kayo ng module for this chapter. Then kayo na yung bahala. Now in comparing, so we already know how to compare two objects like str1 and str2 with the use of the string methods wherein string literals are optimized in Java and both strings are the same objects. Okay. So the getClass method is method that returns a class object where the class itself a class that has a method called getName. Get name returns a string representing the name of the class, and a string name is equal to key that get class and that get name. So, ang get name kasi ang ginagawa niya is siya yung tagakuha. Sa loob ng class, mayroon na siyang value. Siyang kukuha doon, then ilalabas niya. That is what way of get. So, kasi sa paggawa ng, paggawa ng mga methods, we will use this prefix na get. To identify kung tagalabas pa siya or tagakuha siya ng input. So we will cover more on that get prefix. Then we have also the instance operator. So the instance of has two operands. A reference to an object on the left and the a class name of the right. So alimbawa, if we have extension Texas instance of a string, this is true. Kasi si Texas is a string. Now object PT is equal to new point. Let's say the, the value is 10 and 10. PT is instance of a string, which is false. Kasi hindi naman si PT is string. Si PT ay object. Yan. Okay, so that ends our discussion about the working with the Java class library.